Hello and welcome back to Matt's Automotive Channel. It was about 2,500 miles ago we put on a new tire and wheel combos on this uh, Subaru Legacy GT and it had been great ever since uh, until now when we recently detected a vibration at least at freeway speeds. Um, definitely through the front wheel you let go of the wheel and you can kind of see it shake back and forth. Uh, so my hunch is, uh, since these wheels were perfectly balanced uh, when, when we put them on, that uh, it's likely that a weight or something has fallen off the wheels and has caused some kind of imbalance. So anyway, in this video, we're going to be taking all the tires and wheels off. We're going to check the rears too since we got this uh, out. But uh, we're going to be putting all the uh, wheels onto this Harbor Freight uh, bubble balancer and uh, see if we can detect uh, any kind of imbalance in the wheels. And if so, um, we have some uh, weights here that we can go ahead and uh, put on the wheel and get it back into balance. So anyway, with that said, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so before we get started, uh, let's go ahead and set this uh, bubble balancer up. It's actually quite simple, but uh, just a couple things that you should do prior to using it. Um, first of all, you'll notice on the very top of this post here is a fine point. That fine point, actually goes into the bottom side of this part here. You can see the little hole in there. It has to ride right onto that. So anyway, since that's gonna be swiveling back and forth on this, we want to reduce the amount of friction as much as possible. So before using it, I'm gonna go ahead and put a little dab of oil into that hole there. All right, so let's grab a little oiler out and uh, we'll just go ahead and put a little drop down there in the very middle. There we go. I'm going to wipe off the excess there. And then, now we can go ahead and set it on top here. All right, uh, now that we got it on, we want to make sure that it's uh, going to zero out here. And you can see the little bubble there. It should be dead center of that little circle drawn. And it is. And uh, just to double check, let's upset the balance here a little bit. And when it stops, it should always come back and be dead center. All right, so let's go ahead and get the wheel off the car. Okay, before we can use the uh, balancer, we need to get the center cap out. So in most cars here, most wheels, you can just uh, go ahead and tap it out. There we go. Okay, now since our assumption is that probably one of the... Uh, Wheel weights has fallen off. Um, I thought I'd just uh, visually inspect the thing and see if it looks like there's any spot where some weights have come off. And if you look real closely here, it looks like there was some weights right there uh, that may have come off at some point. So anyway, we'll go ahead and put it onto the balancer and uh, see if we can confirm that this is the portion of the wheel that needs the additional weights. So let's go ahead and set the, uh, <coughs> the wheel down here on the balancer. And this is kind of a self-centering thing. Since it's cone-shaped, it kind of, as it sets down with the cone, centers itself. All right, and then once it's on here, um, we can move this back and forth. And when it stops moving, it should always come back to the same place. If it doesn't, then there's probably too much friction on that little point that we oiled up, and you might want to take a closer look and address that. So anyway, let's take a look here and see what, what it looks like. Okay, so let's look down here a little closer on this uh, bubble balancer and uh, you'll see that the bubble although it is within the circle is not dead center i wish they'd make that circle a little smaller um, but you definitely want that bubble dead center and uh, if you look at it um, i'll push on this side of the wheel and you can see the bubble goes that direction which means we need to add weight where the bubble is closest to so, if we add, were to add a little weight over here on this side, you can see that we can bring that bubble more in center. So, what we'll do is we'll set some weights around the side here, play with it until we get it perfectly balanced. So, I got some weights here. Uh, these particular ones are half ounce. I also have some here that are one quarter ounce. And uh, so, anyway, we'll take some of these, play around with them, and uh, we'll set them right so they're about the same distance as where we'd actually be putting them onto the wheel. So, let's just kind of play around with this for a bit until we can get it perfectly balanced.
actually it looks like here, if we put one ounce in about right where the other ones look like they'd come off, we have a pretty darn good balance there. In fact, it looks pretty much dead center. So that's what we'll do. We'll go ahead and prep that surface there and then add these weights and then check it once more. And if it's dead center, we got it balanced. So as you can see here, there's a little bit of adhesive here that we need to pull off if we want the new weights to stick well. Uh, so anyway, since I'm going to pull that off, it could potentially change the balance a little bit. So once that's all cleaned up, I'll put the uh, wheel back onto the balancer and we'll check the balance one more time before we actually add the weights. Okay, so as to not damage the wheel, uh, many of these are an alloy wheel or aluminum, so they're very soft. I'm using a plastic scraper. So we'll get the most of it off with this. Okay, boy, a lot of material came off there, as you can see. Got a little bit there on the ground. So anyway, to get the rest of it off, I'm going to use a little bit of lighter fluid. And uh, this seems to dissolve that uh, adhesive pretty well, just to get the rest of it off. And then it'll also provide a nice clean surface for us to add the new weights. Okay, now that we got it pretty well cleaned off, we decided that we needed about uh, one ounce of weight, which will be the combination of these two. So we'll just go ahead and pull this a little later off here, exposing the adhesive, and apply it down here. Okay, now with the weight on, let's uh, check our balance here one more time. And it looks pretty dead on. So, we'll just repeat this process with the rest of the wheels, and uh, we'll take it out for a test drive and see if we have a balanced tires. Now, one thing that I'd like to point out, uh, one of the weaknesses with the bubble balancer is it does a static balance. So, in other words, as you're looking down onto this thing here, it will tell you whether everything is balanced across the board here. But what it doesn't do is determine if there's any abnormalities in the weight distribution uh, from side to side of the wheel. So, for instance, if you had... If you, let's just say you added on an ounce here on this side, and then you added another ounce down here on that side, it would still be statically balanced. However, when you spin the wheel, it would try to wobble back and forth like this because each side of the wheel has a different balance, even though it's statically balanced going across. So that's why when you take it to a tire shop, they always spin the wheel to balance it. It's what they call a dynamic balance, and it is a better balance. However, when the tire is narrow, uh, that has less of an effect. And uh, also, if you have a good uh, even distribution from side to side, um, the dynamic balance is not as important. A dynamic balance will always be better, but most of the time, you can get away with using this uh, bubble balancer. So anyway, just to let you know the difference between static balancing and dynamic balancing, this is static. When they actually spin the wheel, that's a dynamic balance. It's a better balance, but those machines cost a lot. This seems very cheap and easy to do on your own. Okay, and then once you have your wheel back on, now don't forget to put your center caps back in. Just push in, and then you're done. Now we'll have to lower it and then torque the wheel to spec. Okay, now these wheels get torqued down to 85 pound feet. All right, let's give this a test drive and see if we got rid of our vibration issue. All right, so let's get her up to speed here. Get her up to around 60 and see if we still see any vibration in the wheel. Okay guys, looks like this was a success. We have no more vibration than the wheel. So anyway, we'll catch you on the next one. Have a great day. Bye-bye.